everyone, today we are talking about scaling your lawn care and landscape business from a startup to success. And I've got a lot of background knowledge on this because we started our company in 2014. It's been a long journey. The first location in Illinois, it took quite a bit of time to get to a million dollars in sales. And our second location in Florida, because we learned so much, we were able to implement those things very, very quickly. And we were able to achieve a million in sales very fast. The first nine months, we did 480. The first rolling 12 months, we did a million and a half. The next 12 months, we did I think this last year in 2023, we did 2 million 560 or 90,000. We were able to take that knowledge that we had learned and we were able to apply that. And that is the whole purpose of the YouTube channel, the, the Growcom, the podcast, everything is to share information so people can implement that in their business, take the little pieces and grow their businesses faster, more effectively and have more success where you can get to having the things you want, having a more fruitful life and not necessarily always just grinding away at work unless that's purely your passion and you want to grind away at work. And that's what all of this is for and that's what I want to bring to you. And it's been a long road. This stuff didn't happen immediately. So when you watch a video like this, you take the gold nuggets, the little pieces that you can apply to your business and do those one at a time. We didn't apply all of this at once. It took years after going to conferences and reading and all these things. And we're still, that's why every year we continue to grow because we actively are learning and building more into the business. But it's one little thing after another, just forever that makes the business better. And so once you get a big enough stock of those, you're able to go and do what we did and, and then grow a lot faster because you already know so much and your own knowledge, your own knowledge set that you learn from content, videos, reading, education, conferences, all of those things, that cannot be taken away from you. Almost everything else in life can, that you cannot lose. That is something that you can leverage so much in your business. So let's get right into this. If you're wanting to go from startup and scale your business, there's a few things that you definitely have to be thinking about. Number one's marketing. Marketing's massive. If I look at the three pieces of businesses of a business to scale, I'm looking at marketing, sales, production, and I want that to keep spinning faster and faster and faster. Marketing leads everything. People have to know you. So if you're getting started up, you have to get eyeballs on you. And I know that when you're starting, you're saying, man, I don't have the money, I can't afford it. I've been there. I'm gonna tell you over time, you're gonna become more confident and you're gonna do more and more things where you're like, don't feel like I've got the money, but I'm having faith that this is gonna work out. You're not throwing money down the drain. You're not doing garbage marketing. You're working with professionals and you realize, hey, that's a big, that's a big chunk of change and it's not comfortable, but I'm gonna do it. Usually when you're growing your business, not being comfortable is a sign you're doing the right thing in the first place. So if you're wanting to get going and you don't have the money, knocking on doors, cheap flyers. You can see our ridiculously cheap flyers. I still have pictures of them, still have some of the originals. They were, <laughs> now I look at them like that's garbage, but it got us working, it got us started. And you have to create that snowball effect. And once you start getting momentum, you've got to do a little bit more and a little bit more. Then we started spending 200 bucks a month for an ad in the newspaper. And then we focused on our website, did all these things. And if you're going to start a company, you have to figure out personally where I'm pointing you at is you have to come up with the money to have someone create a good website. This is probably something that you can get done, I'm assuming for a couple thousand dollars that is going to rank well. Don't waste the time to build it on Wix, to build it on Squarespace or whatever it is, and then just feel proud about it because you built it. Business is not about being proud about that you can accomplish something. It's about having the thing that's gonna work well to gain you traction. So number one is still your website. It is the hub for everything. It's everything that comes to your business flows through your website. Any of your paper ads, your flyer, your if you knock and you meet somebody, you give them a business card and there's a website on there where they can learn more about you, where they can get educated on the business, where they can become familiar with the business. After that, the sky's the limit. There's so much you can do. But just like all these pieces, you're not gonna go out and do everything when you start. Get the website so you've got the hub. Then start bolting on other pieces as you test, as you create more money. The main thing though that you have to realize is it's screwed up how marketing works. Marketing comes before money. Everyone says, once I have money, I'll market more. Unfortunately, without the work to create money, you're never gonna have the money to market more. And that's why there's a lot of times where you have to remember that. Really do your due diligence and make sure you're not doing garbage marketing, buying garbage websites, doing ridiculous stuff that's not gonna have the return. Make sure you're doing good things but you have to remember, man, maybe I should put this on this card. I'm not saying do silly stuff and, and spend your money foolishly, but I'll say there's a lot of times where I'm like, hey, I'm gonna put that on a card. 
I'm gonna pay for that in 30 days once we crank out all this work and it comes back around. The way to guard yourself against having bad bad relationships, bad bad situations with vendors who do marketing, websites, anything for you is as simple as how you do it with employees. When you go and meet someone, ask them, hey, do you have any referral or do you have any references for your work? Anybody else you've worked with? Tell me about how the how the process went for them. And then so you go to their other professional references and you say, hey, I'm thinking about doing a website. I'm thinking about having them do paper ads. I'm thinking about having them do newspaper ads. I'm thinking about have them having them do value packs or all these different things you can do. It's endless, right? There's so many ways to market. Facebook ads, Google service leads, like, so all this different stuff. How did they do? How was their performance? Did you feel like it brought value? And now you're not just banking off of the person selling themselves. You're actually going to their references, their professional references, and you're verifying, did they do a good job? Then you can start building more and more marketing with that mindset as you go. And also just always remember, marketing comes first money comes at the end. So we have to market. A lot of times we have to do something. We have to create some kind of activity even without money. So if you can't come up with a way to spend money even when you don't have money, that means you're going to have to put more sweat equity into it. So that means knocking on doors, being out there networking, doing all kinds of things to create traction, to get eyeballs, Facebook posts, constantly scouring the different groups in your area. Anytime someone wants something, you drop a link to your website, you drop a link to your Facebook, you do all of these things. There's a bunch of free marketing. There's a bunch of paid marketing. Depending on what you can afford, you have to choose between those. But I'm going to say there's some times where there's marketing you have to pay for. You're not going to feel comfortable spending it. And you're going to need to spend it anyway to grow your company. Next, financial management. This is huge. So we started getting some things rolling. We've started doing a little bit of work. We haven't got to the hiring yet. And technically that might even come before financial management. Well, we're getting there. Financial management happens so early in a business. If you are just starting and it's just you, you need to be very, very diligent about paying attention to times. How long does it take to do this? How long does it take to do that? You're going to write those things down. You're going to track those things. If it's just me, when I started out, I tracked how long it took for me to mow a lawn, how long it, tracked, it took for us to do this leaf cleanup. So I could use that data and then allow that be input into the situation of where when we scale the company, we can use those numbers to help us estimate faster. All tracking in a service-based company is huge because what you're gonna find out is you add more and more employees, your labor is gonna be your biggest cost. It's really easy to make a lot of money or maybe not a lot of money, but be extremely profitable when it's just you. You've got the most skin in the game. You're the most effective. You have everything banking on this. Your employees do not. Knowing these numbers and then being able to track this stuff as you have more and more employees is very important because one of the key factors in our business being successful is our labor to revenue percentage. And that for us being somewhere in the 20 to 25%, that's the sweet spot where we are killing it. Under 30, hey, you know, I'll take it, but we're still trying to make it better because it's something we focus on. And everything in your business, Finances are one of the key ones, but everything in your business, what gets tracked, what gets measured, improves. If you don't track it and you don't measure it, it can't improve. That's why when it comes to finances, if you're just starting out, you should be learning about all the little different facets. You're not going to be a professional at all of them, but you should understand and be able to have a conversation with someone. First, thinking about like doing accounting, all of the stuff, inputting information into QuickBooks, my chart of account, all these different things. I don't think that you need to be a professional at it, but I think you need to be able to speak the lingo. You need to know what reconciling account is. You need to know how to reconcile account. You need to know how to lay out your chart of accounts. You should know that in this business, our labor is cost of goods sold. And so that should be above the gross profit line. And this all takes time, watching YouTube videos, reading, learning, understanding, figuring out how to set up stuff, how to input stuff. I even at first did some of our taxes just because I wanted to be knowledgeable. And what it gave me was the ability to have a conversation with an accountant that is much more high level than someone who knows nothing at all. So I'm able to hold people more accountable because even though I'm not a professional, I do know a fair amount about my numbers. And so financial management, the more you can know, the more successful you can be, the more accountable you can hold the people around you so you can ultimately keep everyone riding that razor's edge, making sure everything is profitable and heading in the right direction as much as possible. And it'll allow you to more easily find problems. When you look at your P&L, man, 
my P&L that stands for profit and loss. Wow, that looks out of whack. Okay, I'm gonna drill down into that. I'm gonna look at my balance sheet. Okay, I'm gonna drill down into that. That looks out of whack. Like it looks like this something is goofy here and it leads you to where problems are in your business. And financial management is everything. The more you're pushing, the more you're growing, the more you need to maintain the, the priority of being as profitable as possible because growth sucks money. And so everything I'm talking about here is more on the tail end, but on the front end of this, is job costing back to what I said tracking your times verifying that when a project is done that it was profitable within the specs of what you want right this much budgeted time this much material it came in on budget meaning that okay we did our job up front now was the overhead and other things out of control and after our gross profit did that did it eat all the money out of our gross profit like what happened in the business this is all financial management it's way too wide of a spectrum to go over in a little video but there's so many books out there you know, there's so much information out there to learn, to gain knowledge. Audiobooks has changed my life because I used to have the story of I hated to read. So I used audiobooks all the time to learn. Can't remember what it is. It's something MBA, one day MBA, one year MBA, something like that. It's a book all about finances, all about the business finances. And all those different books have gave me more knowledge and more information on this very topic. I hear so many people talk about how it's hard to make money. It's not so much that it's hard to make money. Money's really easy to make. It's just, you have to constantly watch and learn. And then the other thing in the finance spectrum of this is you're gonna have to hire professionals as you grow. And showing your numbers to people kind of feels like getting naked in front of people. People are uncomfortable, they're scared. Oh my God, what are you gonna find? The reality is, is the more you can show, the more you can put out there in front of everybody, the more you can just find the problems easier and realize that it's not actually that scary. It's something that the more open I am, the, the quicker we come to a resolve and the quicker we get better. So the finance portion of this is huge. And you need to start playing the finance and understanding and learning about a game very, very early so you can be successful as you grow. Too many people, act like it doesn't matter. They act like small things don't matter because there's not many people involved. Well, everything starts at one. I start a business, it starts with me. Then it multiplies. So if we can start good habits at me, we can transfer those to more and more and more people. So when there's 30 people, we're not trying to say, okay, everybody get your head straight. We're changing everything now to be more responsible with our finances. We've been talking about numbers and goals and everything forever. Personally, I think that being an open book is the, the way a business should be. Another great book to give you on this is The Great Game of Business by Jack Stack. It's all about how Springfield remanufacturing, everyone in the company knows the numbers and knows how they personally affect the number so they know how they can make the numbers better and then that affects their personal incentive. So numbers, financial management, huge. Let's follow that with the people. What we were just talking about, hiring. Hiring is a huge part of your business. When you're in the service industry, it's even more because without employees to do the work, without staff to take the calls, without all this, you can only create so much. If you want to be a solo person, that's fine. And when you're solo, hiring's not that important because you're not looking to grow. And when you're solo, you have a much different mindset because 100% of my effort creates 100% of the outcome of revenue. As you scale your company and you get 10 employees, all of a sudden you very quickly become, if I go out and into the field, now I only affect 10% of the revenue. And so therefore I need to get on projects, things that produce 100% change across all of this so I can affect the change in the business much more dramatically. And so hiring is huge. Hiring is so important and hiring is scary at times. And let me give you the, the sad truth. You're not always gonna get it right. You can practice time in and time out. You can do all the tricks, all the strategies, watch for all the red flags, and you're still gonna fuck up. You're still gonna hire a fuck up. You're still gonna hire someone that is personally out for your worst interest, and then you're gonna have to navigate that. It's gonna be a ticking time bomb in your company. So just get over it and start hiring, and then learn a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as you go. With hiring, probably one of the biggest things is making sure your documentation is right. So your onboarding, your handbook, all these things. Don't short yourself and not have a handbook early on. It's something that protects your company. The how, the how not to of everything in the company, having sign offs on these so when people break the rules and now having something that you can hold them accountable to, having all the different liability limitations of sign offs and, and, and different things in your company will allow you to 
not have issues in the future. If there's not a rule set on how to or how not to do something, it leads to a lot of gray area problems. And then with employees, as you scale, that just becomes more and more prom problematic. Your liability just grows and grows and grows and grows. And before you know it, it bites you in the ass. And how do I know that? It bit me in the ass. But it's bit me in the ass again. It's caused us to create a massive handbook and we keep adding to that handbook when crazy things happen. So know it's gonna happen. It's never gonna quit happening. The bigger you get, the bigger the target is on your back for there to be problems, whether it be from clients or the outside public, whether it be from internally with employees, whether it be from God knows where, the bigger you are, the bigger the target is. That's just the, the, the plain hard facts about it. But let's get right back into the actual hiring and not so much on the negative. You're gonna need people. You're going to need people in a labor job. The question is, what are you looking for? For me, I have had much more success with people that have a great attitude, a willingness to learn than just all the knowledge in the world. There has been about 85 to 90% of the time that all the knowledge in the world came with bad habits, came with bad attitude, and came with a not willingness to change, learn, and evolve towards anything new. That was negative for our company. With employees, it's gonna be just like when we talked about marketing. You are gonna to wanna to ask for professional references when you're interviewing them. You're gonna call those professional references. There's only so many things you can say and ask on a call like this. Look up the legality in your state. But you're gonna say, hey, wanna call and ask about this person? Would you hire him again? Whatever the case may be, whatever's legal to say in your area. People can't even legally say certain answers. What you're looking for is the hesitation in someone's voice. If I ask them, would you hire him again? And they're like, uh -huh, that hesitation means no. So even if they say yes, that means no. And so if I call three people and they all said it was a rock star, obviously we're gonna give that person a go. We're gonna hire them and bring them on board. And then a lot of the questions you ask when you're interviewing them, that is more open-ended questions. It's not, hey, do you like to work outside? Yes. It's very easy for me to gain, right? I know what you want. You don't ask questions to people when you're interviewing where they can just be like, it's obvious what they want me to say. And it's very easy to get into that. Hey, do you like this? Do you like that? Because that's the things in, these in, in the industry. You need to ask open-ended questions that guide you towards the things that you deem very important in your company. For me, I said attitude, willingness to learn. Those are very important, right? So I'm going to ask situations that give me determining factors of their attitude. Hey, tell me about your last job. Tell me about your last boss. Very open-ended. There's no correct, wrong, or right answer. But if you tell me about your boss and I can sense that you're negative and you're shit talking them, it tells me you have a poor attitude towards them and I'll be the next company or will be the next company or you'll be the next company that they talk shit about. That little thing guides me in a direction because most great employees, even if they had a problem with their employer, they're not gonna talk poorly of them because they know it does no one any value and that's not gonna be the way it is. So that's one. If I'm wanting to know about their ability to, willingness to learn. I ask about, hey, hey, when you get in this situation, we're unsure of how, like, how do you handle a situation where you're unsure of how to do X, or unsure of how to do a thing? I'm kind of alluding to this open-ended thing of, hey, are they going to tell me, well, you know, typically I pull up my phone and I get on YouTube and I try to learn and try to figure out a way. Are they going to show me they're a problem solver and that they want to just figure it out and they have a willingness to learn or they go to someone else on staff and ask and try to get input so they can better themselves? Are they going to say, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't have an answer for that. You know, if I get in a situation, like I just wait for somebody to tell me something. These aren't exact, right? But these are the kind of open-ended things you're going to ask to guide you, to give you the interpretation of, are they matching the value? Are they matching the thing that we want out of an employee? Or are they over here on the far end where they're just like, dude, this person's never going to be a good fit for us. Another great one is, why did you apply here? Well, I just need a check. Yep. Just need a job. That's a shitty answer. And a lot of times when I've hired that person, they haven't worked out. Sometimes I've hired that person, they've worked out, but I asked them other things that aligned more with us. So there's all these little things and you're going to keep building this over time. But let's go back to the beginning of this. You're not always going to get it right. You're still going to screw up. So give yourself some grace. Go out there and hire and hire and hire. If you have problems, you have to hold people accountable and you eventually have to fire. It's one of the most uncomfortable parts. I hate it. I hate firing people. I hate being involved with it. I hate having to do it. I've had to do it a lot. It's not fun. Our staff does it a lot. It's not fun. You know the probably worst hire in the world? Excuse me, the worst fire in the world isn't even someone that's necessarily doing wrong. It's someone that's been with you forever and you've realized that they no longer fit where the company's going and they're not willing to change. That's a thousand percent worse than firing anybody that is doing everything wrong because you care and you've been around this person for a long time. But if you're like us, we are headed here, way up, way up. 
And if you're not sitting well with that mission, if you're not making sure we're heading that direction, if you're not willing to realign and help us get there, eventually we're gonna have to part ways because this is a meritocracy. That's Scooter's Lawn Care. If you're kicking ass, you will move up. If you're not kicking ass, you're either gonna stay where you're at or if you're doing bad enough, you're gonna go backwards and end up not being there. And that's very important in our company. So those are things you're gonna to have to decide, things you're gonna to have to think about and holding people accountable, that's a, that's a whole nother realm. So hiring is a big deal. Give yourself some grace. You're never gonna get it perfect. You're gonna make mistakes. The most important thing is you start doing it and you start getting that experience. The time experience, the doing experience in everything is so much better than just thinking about it or just listening to me and hoping that you gain all, all the answers, that, that hiring course that I can go watch to be the perfect interviewer and hire. You're not gonna be that person. You're just gonna get better over time. 30 years down the road, you'll still end up hiring the wrong person every now and then. Finally, last part of scaling your business from startup to success or whatever you deem success, you have to leverage technology. We are actively always looking for the next technology we'll use for our business, whether it be in how we store digital fire files, whether it be our CRM, whatever the case is, you have to leverage technology. You have to be able to expedite all the things I talked about. You have to be able to expedite marketing. You have to be able to expedite financial management. You have to be able to expedite hiring. And with technology, you can do all these things. We can market back to our list through emails, through automations, through all these drip campaigns that automatically happen. The more you can separate yourself from the old school way of paper, and our industry is fucking slow. Like people don't wanna change, people don't wanna move, people don't wanna go to this new way. Well, you're gonna get left in the past. Personally, our company will run you over if you're old school because you're just not fast enough to compete in the day and age where whether you like it or not, all the people that are coming into this market, they're gonna start buying things, they watch everything on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and it's all instant. And that's how they want their numbers. That's how they want their finances. They don't want to look at your website and be like, huh, man, it doesn't make sense. There's no prices. They want to be able to see the prices. And you're still stuck in, oh my God, if I put my hourly rates on here, someone could know. Everybody fucking knows roughly what we all charge. It's irrelevant. Put it on there, make it easier for people to buy, right? So leverage technology, leverage your website to make it easy for people to buy, leverage your video content to educate them so when they come, it's easy to buy, leverage your CRM to make the transaction of someone coming into the system all the way to fulfilled and sold job as easy as possible while tracking how they came in so you can better your marketing and leverage all these different things. Leverage your GPS so you can know where the crews are at. You can use that to better align new jobs that get added in or other tasks. Leverage all the technology at your fingertips. In a day and age where we have all these high-tech CRMs, we have GPS, we have ChatGPT, we have all of these things. We have Google Drive, Dropbox, all these different things where we can drop massive files, share that with our teams and do it instantly, as long as you have cell phone service a lot of times. There is just too much stuff for you to be able to leverage to not take advantage of it. You can send an estimate via email instantly. Why would you mail it? Why would it be paper? Why would you, I don't care if you wanna be green or not, why would you waste a sheet of paper to give an estimate? It's ridiculous. That is too slow, that is too old. Think about it. It's not even if you like, I just like how it feels in my hands. It's not even about that. Email and estimate, everything in the company is about serving the client better, making it easier for them, making it faster, making it more seamless. If I email them an estimate and then there's the link to accept, I can receive it and I can be done. Someone can be on the phone on our team, they can do an estimate for lawn care, they can send the estimate for lawn care. They can be talking to the person. The person can see it and accept it while they're on the phone. And this can all happen in 15 minutes or less. Think about the power of that. Think about how that runs over everything else and everybody else that is still stuck in the stone age that's unwilling to move. And no, you've got a huge leg up on competition that's older than you because the older the business owner, the less likely they are to conform. The less likely they are to take on all these new technologies, change, do different things completely different. And I had a little bit of a flash of this the other day. I looked down at something and I'm like, I just realized I hate change. I just realized I hate that little change. And I'm like, dude, you gotta push that away. Because I always said at 40, people wanna stop changing. That's my own personal opinion. And I'm getting closer, right? You gotta change, you gotta evolve. You gotta make your company better. This is a day and age where you got everything at your fingertips to scale this thing so aggressively fast. You can go from nothing to 100 to 200 to 300 to a million to 2 million to 10 million in a very quick time span. You can learn anything instantly online. Do that, grow your company, get whatever it is you want whether that be awesome life for your family, Lamborghinis or whatever, I, I don't care, but build. 
and build as quickly as you can so you can do those things. Personally, I think a lot of times you need to take care of yourself first and then you need to be able to give back to all the people around you as well. Me, I've kind of you know got a little bit where I feel more comfortable and then I put a huge focus on all my team. Like to me, it's about them because I got comfortable and not comfortable where I stopped growing, but I got comfortable enough to where, hey, I'm happy. I've worked my ass off and I want to at least have something to show for it. And then I put a huge focus on the team because then I learned on the back side of that, there's going to be exponential growth for me as well. So it's like the more I can help and foster them being a bunch of badasses, the more we're all going to be badasses. And I don't want to win alone. I want to win with a huge group of people. So that is how you scale and grow your company. If this has helped you at all, please give it a thumbs up. Share this with somebody else that needs to grow their company that you know that's got their head stuck in their ass. Also, check this, check our Grow by Design podcast out. Check out the coaching group, growcom at jacobgodar.com. You can sign up for the wait list. Check out everything we're involved with because it's purely to try to help people, to try to push them. Get out there, grow the shit, grow your business. You can have whatever you want.